Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very welcome to Mass today on the second Sunday of Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So when the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I can see the holes of the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. 
The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There are many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. During excavations in Egypt in the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. The wheat would have been about 5,000 years old. Someone decided to plant the grains, the grains and to their, their amazement, they actually grew and came to life. Now, my faith would be like those dormant grains unless I believe that Jesus is a real living person who touches my life in the here and now, and I am reassured by his reassuring presence. There's an old proverb which says, sometimes God visits us, but we're not at home. And that's precisely what happened to Doubting Thomas. We're not at home, for instance, if our faith in him is merely academic, or if we believe that science or observable data explains everything. That doesn't at all mean, of course, that the church is anti-scientific, as some people make out. The first observatory in the world, for instance, was in the Vatican. The first universities in Europe, which became the model of all universities, were mostly founded by the Catholic Church and included faculties on natural philosophy and physics. Now, I know that the Church censored Galileo, but it wasn't because the Church discounted his theory that the earth circled the sun, as some make out, but because they wanted him to treat it as a hypothesis rather than undiluted truth or undisputed truth. But he would have none of it, he wouldn't listen. That was the numb of the problem, the nub of the problem. The Protestant church at the time dismissed the theory as anti-scripture. Thomas, as we heard in the reading, would not believe that Jesus had risen until, he, until he'd seen him in the flesh but Jesus gently tells him, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now that includes you and me. I believe that the resurrection has more to do with the transformation of the inner man or woman than seeing him in the flesh. If Jesus were to walk into this church right now and show himself to everybody in the flesh, after the dust had settled, I wonder would we leave this church and become really better people? I doubt it. Or if we'd live more committed Christian lives. Jesus didn't come down from the cross when challenged because he knew that if he did, the people would still not believe in him. He worked hundreds of miracles for all to see, but they still put him on the cross. And it wasn't just the leaders. A lot of the ordinary people who had seen those miracles were there on Calvary shouting for his crucifixion. It's a bit like global warming, I suppose. Despite the evidence we have, many people still don't believe in that, despite that evidence. The doctrine of the resurrection is the cornerstone on which our Christianity rests. Tamper with that, 
and we shake the very foundations of the Christian faith. As St. Paul says, he reminds us that if Christ is not risen, then all our faith, all our believing is in vain. The church wasn't built on doubting Thomas's, but on the unshakable belief that Jesus rose dead in his human body and he's with us in the church until the end of time he's with us particularly in the mass thomas wanted to touch the lord's wounds but it is he who is touched when the risen jesus pays him a surprise visit we don't doubt his presence with us in the mass there we draw close to him Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth in baptism, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on, in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails and do not be unbelieving but believing. Alleluia. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.